I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I came skipping and jumping when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because I know that everything I need, I get it right here. When I come into God's hands, at house, I get instruction, release. I get peace of mind. I be able to, to and I, I morph just a little bit into my God. Last week, we started a series that says, No Man's an Island. And No Man's an Island, last week we started it. And today, as we move on with it, we're just going to look very briefly at Luke chapter 17, as I read from verse 1 to 5. And then we're going to pray into it as we bring the service to a close. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. Please say with me, bound to come. But woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostles said to the Lord, hey, increase our faith. Amen. We started looking at um, last week about how no man's an island. And I gave us an example of what an island is. And we know that an island is not landlocked, but it's like if you like imagine a little land that has sea all around it. We looked about a definition and we looked at a scripture that says um, in, in Genesis chapter 2, which says that it's not good for man to be alone. And we looked at God's original intention, that his intention is not for any man to be on an island. When we looked at definition of island or alone, we looked about isolation, about the fact that God never expects or requires, it's not his intention or desire for us that we be isolated. Then as we looked at it, we, we realized that sometimes men, we become islands. I gave us a story about Robinson Crusoe and about how he was happy to see man Friday. So as a people, that's how God made you and I. So moving it forward, God is speaking to you and I that he never makes anybody useless. See, these DVDs are available. And the gifting and anything he's asked you and I to do, we need people. And as we were coming to the end of the service last week, we started speaking and God spoke directly to somebody here about how the person had been hurt. And so as a result of that, they isolated themselves. And what tends to happen is that we come into church and yes, everybody's born again and all of that, but sometimes people hurt us. And as a result of that, we decide that, you know what? It's okay, I will come to church because I'm a believer and I'm scared that the cane of tribulu is going to come on me and then I'm not going to go to hell, you know. So I, I, don't wanna, I don't want my name to be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. But I will come to church, but I won't do anything. I won't do this, I won't do that. You know, I'll do anything for you, but I won't do that, you know. So you put yourself in isolation. But is that what God requires of you and I? And as we move on to Luke uh, chapter 17, the first thing that we ought to, and the Lord is leading us to look at, is this word here. Jesus said to his disciples, anytime you see to his disciples, it means that we must take note. Because this is, this is what's the word? It's in, in Ghana, we say, Apo. it's like, this is, what am I looking for? The word, like, it's really important. Because Anything he needs to say and that's really, really important, he will tell his disciples. Because remember, his disciples are the ones that are going to carry on the vision. These are the ones that are going to carry his mind. They are representing him. So anytime he comes behind closed door and he speaks to his disciples, it's very important that we take note. He didn't tell everybody, but he's telling his disciples. Let me take an opportunity to prophesy to you that you and I will be truly his disciples. That He will give us nuggets of truth. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that you and I will not have general knowledge. You know, there's a difference when Jesus is speaking to the, the, the what do you call it, the masses. There's a difference in how he speaks. If you like, go and find out. 
He will, he will do things all right. He will bless them all right. But when he comes behind closed doors and he, they close the door, there's a different way of how he speaks to his disciples. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Whatever is going on out there, whatever the church believe, universal thing, let it not be like that with you. But let God speak directly. I prophesy that he'll shut the door and say, okay, now this and this and this is what I'm saying. Then he says this. Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. When it says bound to come, it means that you don't have a choice. As Pastor puts it, whether you like it or yes, it will happen. So, there's certain things that are bound to come. Whether you like it or not, you will grow older. Or you will grow old. Now, some of us, I know that we, we, we don't want to grow old and, you know, we, we behave like, you know, everything is okay. It's fine. On the outward, we may look like something, but in the inward, Jesus on the inside, <laughs> you know that here. Even the things are knocking things, yeah. This morning, even when we were coming to 6 a.m., I was trying to read something on my phone without my friend here. And what I noticed was when I even put the, I had the phone in my hand, I could not see. So I had to say, no, I wouldn't mention the person, the person who's, and she offered very kindly, shall I put on the light for you? And I said, okay. And she put on the light. Then I saw what I did, turned off the light. Then I said to her, oh my gosh, how did this happen? How did I get to this point? It was my grandma that would say, oh, but please pass me. I've got to that stage now. So whether I like it or not, it's inevitable. Some of us have come to that acceptance. You know, let me prophesy. Shall I prophesy? The Bible said, in old age you will bear fruit. I prophesy that in your old age you will bear fruit. Remember, I am that person. Yeah, planted by the streams of water. What? I yield fruit in season. This is my season. What else does he say after that? My leaf will never wither. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. No matter how old we get, we will never wither. We'll be evergreen. And part of that in the spiritual and the physical makes you beautiful. But no matter what, that's what they say to you. Oh, you look good for your age because your age is still there. It's bound to come. Why am I saying this? God is telling you and I that things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. In other words, no matter how well-meaning you are, no matter how good things are, whatever, whatever happens, somebody's going to offend you. No matter how, how beautiful you are sing, no matter how well-meaning you are worshipping the Lord, no matter how you give your all, you are here to open the door. You are here. To, somebody is going to offend you. Somebody is going to say, who does he think he is? Somebody's going, who does she think she is? So she's trying to say that the whole, oh, uh, what do you call it? This whole church, she's the only one. If he's not there, then the, Somebody's going to discourage you. Somebody's going to say, did God really say? Somebody's going to say, so you, you were me with Mama Do, have you not heard? Somebody's going to say, do you know your pastor? Hmm. What church did you say you go to? MC? Hmm. What else? It's okay. I told some of you the story of what happened in my mm, moment. I told some of you that when uh, uh, my husband's father died, went to funeral, and then were there, and um, one, old, his, one old grandma auntie, <laughs> grandma auntie <laughs> from the village, whom I've never met before, came, and she was being introduced to the wives of, you know, Pashadrak's siblings, the, the loads of boys, they were boys, so they were being introduced, and this is so-and-so's wife, so-and-so's wife, so-and-so's wife, never forget that, when you have an experience like that, and it gets to me, and then they say, and this is Parkwes's wife, Pashadrak, that's what I call it at home, Parkwes's wife, and then she looks at me, and she goes, oh, are you the one who has twins? <laughs> of course, I don't have twins, then I said, no, 
Then she looked at me. She said, and she says again, you mean Parquisi? Parquisi's wife. Then I said, mm. then she said, hmm. <laughs> She's rest her case. Now, imagine. Twins? You say you don't have twins? And you are Parquisi's wife? Hmm. The woman rested her case. She had nothing else to say. Now, if you get a hmm moment, depends on what you're standing on, yeah? <laughs> Your brain will be going somewhere. The interesting thing was, to the glory of God, I just looked at her and said, what's wrong with her? Because I had faith that my husband don't have twins anywhere. <laughs> but watch this. This is what happened. It was so funny that day. So pastor was there crying. His father died. They brought the body. I mean, it was serious. He's crying his eyes out. And then all of a sudden, these people will remain nameless. If they have, how do you say, if the cup fits, let them wear it. These people from Freedom Center International, very, um, <laughs> what's the word? I was going to say well to do. Very, we won't mention elders and leaders, went to Pastor and said to him, Pastor, Pastor, and he's crying. So, what's the word to say? Do you by any chance have any twins? <laughs> Did you have twins with some woman somewhere? Please let us know. And he's crying. What are you talking about? The hmm. I won't say anything. Your brain is going here. It's going there. What does that hmm mean? What does hmm mean? That's what the devil does. He speaks hmm. So that your mind will wonder. It's bound to happen. This is the thing. The devil convinces you and I that he never speaks like that. That's not the language he gives us. But Jesus says to his disciples, he says to Freedom Center International, no man is an island. You cannot isolate yourself. But understand that if you isolate yourself or if you don't isolate yourself, no matter what, somebody's going to come in there. The intention is to make sure that you do isolate yourself because God's intention is not for you to isolate yourself. And the hmm, let me mind my own business. I will not join the choir again. You have a beautiful voice. No. It's okay. I will sing in my room. I'll sing in the shower. God knows. He hears. You've got a head for figures. No, 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 no. You can serve. And no. I used to be an usher. What about now? And the thing we forget is that God in his reward, and this is a year of our blessing. It is a year of our blessing. The blessings have to be manifested. But unfortunately for you and I, things don't drop from the sky. We have to position ourselves for the blessing to come. It's unfortunate, isn't it? Because I always say that I would love honest, honestly. I was not honest God, but honestly, honestly. If you want me, I want God to tell me, Dorothy, you're doing this, you don't have a choice. Get up, he pulls me. He doesn't give me free will. I'll be very happy. I'm that person, I want to be like, you know, get up. It's, it, you know, it, it, he's giving my schedule. So I get up and go, okay, prayer time. You don't have a choice. Hey, yeah, yeah. Go do this. Go and speak to that person. Don't give me a choice. It would be so much easier, would it not? At least for me. But what God does is he gives you and I that free will. But if it's a year of blessing, then we have to position ourselves for a blessing. Watch, watch or read your Bible. Anybody who was blessed positioned themselves. They did something to activate that blessing. Don't we just love? I love the scripture where it says in time of famine, Isaac sowed and he reaped a hundredfold. How did he do that? Because God spoke to him and said to him, this is a time of famine. Isaac wanted to leave. Of course, it's natural. Isaac was not supernatural. He's a man just like you and I. So where there was a famine, Isaac prepared to leave. So he was getting ready, packed all his uh, bags and his brick a back. We say in Ghana, I mean, he was making noise. So looking for a greener pasture. But as he was getting ready to bring, take his staff, God said, mm -mm, don't go. But there's famine, don't go. Now, I want you to stay. But there's famine, yes, stay. 
But what does he do? He stays. And then he does what? He sows in a time where it's farming. It doesn't make any sense. But he does so. I'm sure when he was saying, Shandaraba, I have this one. God have mercy. Will it, will it, will it? But in that same year, he reaped a hundredfold. It's a year of our blessing. If it's a year of a blessing, there's certain things we ought to do to activate the blessing. And this is one of them. First of all, we have to understand that we're not an island. We cannot do this by ourselves. God has called you and I to serve in the year of blessing, but not to be by ourselves. But to understand that the devil's job is to try and isolate us. And to understand the fact that somebody is causing us to stumble is neither here nor there. In fact, we should expect it. Things that cause people to stumble are bound to happen. The lesson, number one, we're not an island. Look at the island, all these um, Christopher Columbus and all these people, can't remember a majority of them. Watch what they do. They get into an island, and what do they do? They, first of all, they, they subdue the people that they went to meet. They ruin the island, finish all the coconuts. They don't even know how to replant the coconut. And they come in to destroy. That's what the enemy's job. So he comes in to make sure that he clears you and I, but we thank God for Jesus. We ought to make sure that the, our, our byways or the, the ships and the hovercrafts and all that can come. Because these same ships and hovercrafts also bring other goodies. They bring a blessing. He says that, look, it's bound to happen. So, what we want to do, therefore, is that if somebody causes you and I to stumble, it should not stop us. But it's time to move on. It says, but, whoa, lesson number two, woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble Verse 3, so watch yourselves. Please tell your neighbor, watch yourself. Tell another neighbor, watch yourself. Then say to yourself, watch yourself. There's the lesson here. The stumble will come. The stumbling will come. But we ought to watch ourselves. Because God's intention is not for us to be isolated. So woe to the person that says, who do you think you are? The person that despises somebody's gift to the extent and abuses them to the extent that they give up. Remember last week we were talking about abuse. And we, I was giving an example about what happens if somebody is an abuser. An abuser, most of the majority of the time, in general terms we're speaking, will deliberately, and I use the word schemes and wiles of the enemy, remember, that the person will sit down, they have literally put it to pen to paper. And their intention is to isolate the person that they're abusing. And once they've isolated them from their friends, their family, their neighbor, their dog, their cat, and left them all by themselves, then they can give the, um, what do you call it, the fatal blow and finish it off. That is what the devil plans to do. But woe to that person. Because anybody that does that is doing the devil's job for them. Watch yourself. I ought to watch myself. And many a time we always think to ourselves that, you know, the devil's the devil. Who drew the devil with red? Why did they choose red? Maybe they didn't like red. And who told that person that the devil has horns and looks like a goat? Maybe they didn't like goat meat. I don't know. So that we have in our minds that the devil ought to look like something. And we think that the devil, when he comes, is appearing in some way. The devil uses his angels and demonic people and all that. That's true. But majority of the time, don't stone me, he uses us. The children of the Most High God. The tongue-speaking believers. The good-looking, the good-smelling people. And otherwise, you and I, or I and you, I'll put myself first. So it's important as believers that we watch ourselves. 
That's why Peter writes and he says, be sober. Anytime we hear the word sober, we think of alcoholism, isn't it? So when you look up, let's relate it anyhow. Look when somebody's drunk. They have no sense of direction. No sense. Watch the drunk man walking. He doesn't know that this is level ground. He thinks he's climbing the stairs. No sense of direction. And also, no sense of self-control talks anyhow. I'm going to marry you. Oh, no, that's my food. Doesn't, know, doesn't have any. So, look, the devil is a bad devil. He's not sober, so he, that person at that time cannot make a judgment that will benefit him in any way, shape, or form until he's become sober. So in the spirit realm, God is telling you and I, we have to be sober. Our minds have to be clear. I prophesy the battle in the mind ceases right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of fear, every spirit of distraction, every spirit that doesn't allow us to think properly. Our brains are going up and down. We're waging war against it. We ought to continually, continually stand on the wall with that. Because that's what the enemy does all the time. The battle is always in the mind. For we're not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Let's not be ignorant. He's, why? He says in it, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because the devil is like a roaring lion. What does he do? Seeking whom he may do what? Devour. Think of devour. Devour is not eating like you imagine you go to the queen. I always tell my children when they're younger that, you know, you have to learn, you know, man, I'm trying to teach them how to use fork and knife. I said, when you go to the queen, you have to hold your fork and knife. One day my son says to me, so mom, when am I going to see the queen? He said, soon, soon come, soon come. You don't go to the queen and just be eating your, you devour your Kentucky fried chicken. I mean, folks, there are certain places, no matter how hungry you are, you want to say, no, thank you. It's not everywhere you should be eating just because you're hungry. So when you're sitting there and the food is smelling nice and you know, then your belly, you just pretend it's noise. Is that your belly? The food is there for you to eat, but just because it's there for you to eat, it doesn't mean you should be eating it. They're sitting in rhymes. You have to say, no, thank you. When you finish, find one small, uh, buy a sandwich. Because that environment, you should not be eating. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because the devil's like a world seeking whom he may devour. He wants to tear us apart and he's using you and I. Because if he doesn't, if he brings us, then he's, oh, it's okay. Bringing us down, dividing the kingdom of God. When it's a year of our blessing, and we have to advance. No man is an island. We need one another. He says, be careful. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. It's time for you and I to watch ourselves. And we're going to pray into this, Lord, help me. Watch myself. Help me know myself to know that mm, this way the devil is playing with me. He's using me. I'm not his agent. I am not his, um, um, what do you call it, um, uh, his representative. What other word do you want to have for agent? It says if your brother or sister, and we might not be able to finish it because time is up here. It says if your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. If your brother or sister off, uh, offends your sins against you, it means that there is a possibility it's going to happen. Let's quit thinking that because we're brothers and sisters in Christ, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, it doesn't happen. It happens. We are human beings, and the devil is working hard. And so it happens. We offend one another, but whoa. That means that if, you know, as pastor tells you, the sin of, what's the word that goes? The sin of iniquity and sin of trespass, right? So, so long, as long as it's sin of trespass, i.e., you know, by mistake, I stepped on your foot, but I didn't mean it. In fact, if you read the scriptures, the scripture that God speaking to Moses direct, specifically told them that if somebody by mistake was, you know, doing his sheep or something, and then the thing, or a stone fell on his neighbor, and the neighbor died, he didn't mean it, but the neighbor is dead. 
But he said, let build a, a place of refuge. Let the person go there so that the, 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 what do you call it, the reward of death or something doesn't get him. So after a while, he can come back. He didn't mean it. And that's why in law, we have manslaughter and murder. And murder is when somebody sat down and planned it, that I'm going to kill that person. So that's a sin of trespass. You didn't mean it, and the thing happened. So as believers, we ought to watch ourselves. So any sin that we, as much as people offend us, we ought to we offend people. Sometimes it's a joke. You thought that it was just a joke. You've moved on by. You're there watching your TV. But the person is offended. So don't quit thinking that you are so holy because it's only you that people offend. You also, because, you know, we're human beings. The same way you expect, oh, I was just joking. Forgive me. End off. That's the way we ought to always, because it says that rebuke the person. The rebuke, the word rebuke, we always think it means, hey, hey, Harold. Don't. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means that let's have a communicate. Yeah, I didn't really like the way that you spoke to me at that time. End off. Sorry. Finished. I didn't like the way that, you know, uh, maybe this happened or, you know, at the meeting you could have done this or could have done that. That's it. And if they repent, forget it. Another time, we might fit. I was going to do the other bit. If they, what if they don't repent? Because it says here, if they repent, forgive them. First of all, we ought to watch ourselves. So that's how we all ought to be. Some of us are like, I mean, that's the way I am. That's it. Take me or leave me. Is that how God expects you and I? If you've offended somebody... You ought to let it go. I'm so sorry. And be genuine about it. Genuine. I'm so sorry. Because we ought to think of other people. Romans 12 takes, takes a, talks a lot of that out. He says this. Let me read it to you as we come to Romans 12, um, 17 to 20. It says this. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. So that's the premise we should come from. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As far as it depends on you, watch yourself. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it's mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Why am I talking about this in no man's an island? Number one, somebody will bound to offend you. They're bound to come in in your course of work with God. So don't say that because of this, I've isolated myself because that's not God wants. But woe to that person. But if that person comes and asks for forgiveness, it's our responsibility to forgive them. If they repent, over, let's continue the relationship. If they do not, it doesn't mean that you should not forgive them, but it means go back to Romans 12. Don't pay evil for you. Leave him to God. And God who is the great judge. That's the best place. But believe you me, I have a lot of testimonies about that. If you leave somebody in God's hands, watch what will happen. But all these things, it's not so that you can say, oh, look at this, look at that. But at the end of the day, this year has to be in God's hand and exactly how God wants it. Understand, therefore, that in this year of our blessing, you're not an island you're not going to do it by yourself. God requires you and I to serve in his house, whether it's in the choir, whether it's in the welcome team, whether it's in Sunday school, whatever it is, people will offend you. When you're a group of people, somebody's bound to speak out of 10. Somebody is a pastor's bound to offend you. Maybe the word offends you. Maybe this offends you. But at the end of the day, God requires you and I to move the kingdom forward and see how you might be a part of it. Remember that God's word never gets to him empty. So when the word comes and offends you, it's not because the preacher, somebody told him, somebody told her. No, it means we need to hear it so that we might transform and change. If this word offends you after service, well, I'm going to pack a menu, but you can call me. I forgive you. <laughs> Let's talk about it and move on. And let's allow God. Because God will do exceedingly. 
he do abundantly above that which we can think or imagine. But he expects you and I not to be alone, not to cut ourselves off. I'm in, I'm out. That's why we have loads of church hoppers, loads of kingdom hoppers. Today I'm here, tomorrow I'm there because I've been offended. God requires, because if we walk in that, we'll never receive a blessing. As I end, let me just, I've just come to my testimony. Once I went to preach somewhere, and when I went to preach, the Lord allowed me to do an altar call, an altar call, loads of people standing here like this, and then I'm praying. And then it gets to a person, and I hear the Lord clearly, don't lay hands on her. And I'm thinking, oh, first of all, I'm thinking to myself, but everybody's watching me. They're going to know that I did not lay, I can't do that. But I felt so strongly, don't lie. I don't know why. So I'm like, who? What am I going to do? 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 So then eventually, I kind of say to her, look, you know, just go and stay by the altar and, you know, um, go and pray. And then as, as the Lord, she was praying and stuff like that, she came to me. And then as I was just looking at her like, what, what? I asked her, oh, do you come to this church? She said, oh, yeah, I've just started coming to this church, you know. And then I said, oh, okay, so I don't know. I just said, what church did you go to before? Or oh, some other church. It turned out that where she had gone to church, she was offended. The, yeah, she was offended by the pastor. Or the pastor offended her. And as a result of that, she left the church. Left the church with anger. And bitterness against the man of God that she was under. I'm like, ooh, okay. But she, fun enough, she didn't tell me the details. But God said to me, tell her, and I was doing like a three-day conference. Tell her to go home, pray about it, deal with it, and then come back tomorrow. Well, she went, came back the next day. I'm telling you what, even her countenance, everything had changed on her. Then God said, pray for her. Pray for her. Bitterness anger, whatever, say go back and deal with it and move on. That is what God requires of you and I. Because the offenses, the bitterness, were still in God's hands and we think we can do whatever. So meanwhile, she's moved to another church, sitting at the back, doing nothing when God has called her to do something great for the kingdom and for the church. Let us not be a story like that, but understand that you are not an island. Please rise with me. Father, we're so thankful for your word. We honor you that you do watch over it. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, in our minds, and our hearts, we'll understand that the kingdom has suffered violence and continues to. But we will take it by force and we'll advance the kingdom knowing, Lord, that the gates of hell will never prevail against us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our mission is raising overcomers, setting the captives free. Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the Word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness. And we hope you've been blessed by today's message. Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207 277 8700. You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org. And remember, there is progress in freedom.